This is DNA. In the 1950s, we discovered that these long strands contain hereditary information, the blueprint for life on Earth. In the 1970s, we learned how to cut and splice these strands. Today, the tools of modern biotechnology are allowing us to do things we never before thought possible. Join us for an exploration of how these tools are changing agriculture, how scientists, regulators, members of industry, and the public in North Carolina are approaching this new technology. North Carolina is farming country. Some 70,000 farms, large and small, are scattered throughout the state. Victor Pace and his son Tim are the third and fourth generation to work their small farm. The tools of modern agriculture have helped them grow better crops with higher yields, but farming is still an unpredictable challenge. In farming, you've got a lot of intangibles, and you can't really plan if you knew that you weren't going to have a drought, and if you knew that you weren't going to have insect damage, and if you knew that you weren't going to have nematode damage, as far as your practices and what you do in your fields, you could do them a lot different. Now it's kind of like Russian roulette. For the farmer, the world of agriculture is complex and risky. He stands guard against the ravages of nature, of disease, of drought, of insects, against the changing demands of the environment. For the farmer, life is a constant search. He's always looking for new ways to manage his crops better ways to control insects and weeds, better fertilizers to build his soil, better seeds. If you ask me what the dream seed would be, it would be resistant to uh, the weather as far as drought resistant, then it would be nematode resistant, and then it would be insect resistant. So there would be no way that you could have a crop there. That would be the dream seed, you know, but that's, uh, I doubt that we'll ever see anything quite like that uh, in our lifetime. For years, Plant breeders have tried to produce seeds like Tim Pace and other farmers dream of. By taking pollen from one variety and using it to fertilize another, they try to combine desirable traits and to continually improve our major crops. But improvement through such traditional crossbreeding methods takes many years, and there are always limits to which plants can be crossbred. Genetic engineering and other tools of modern biotechnology help plant breeders overcome these limitations of crossbreeding. Desirable traits found in many plants, as well as other organisms, can be transferred into crop plants, allowing us to tap into nature's rich genetic diversity for the goal of crop improvement. In North Carolina, companies are now using these new tools of genetic engineering to develop plants that are more nutritious and that are able to resist insects and disease. With the new technology of plant gene transfer, we have the capability of moving a plant gene from one plant to another over a great evolutionary distance. Such plants would not normally mate with each other, so a plant breeder couldn't even approach doing that kind of thing. But we can do it very precisely. We can fish out one desirable gene, for example, for disease resistance, and insert it into a very, very distant plant. One method of gene transfer uses a common soil bacterium called the agrobacterium, which has the ability to transfer its DNA into some plants. Scientists can alter the DNA of the agrobacterium to include a new gene. Here, a piece of leaf is exposed to a solution containing the altered agrobacterium. Inside the leaf, at the level of the single cell, the agrobacterium transfers its DNA into the plant cell. This transfer of genetic material occurs at the edge of the leaf piece. The agrobacterium binds to the cell and duplicates its own DNA, including the new gene, colored blue in the diagram. Now the agrobacterium does what it does in nature. It transfers the new gene into the plant cell. When the plant cell divides, each of the daughter cells will contain the new gene. 
The cells of the leaf piece then grow, first into a tiny shoot and eventually into a delicate new plant. But the agrobacterium is successful in transferring genes only into certain plants and not others. The transformation of important food crops such as corn requires different genetic engineering approaches. Here, for example, a scientist uses one of the newest methods of gene transfer. Small metal beads are coated with DNA and then inserted into the firing chamber of a gun-like device. A petri dish containing pieces of plant tissue is then placed into a vacuum chamber. Now the device is ready to fire tiny pellets coated with DNA into the plant pieces. The bombarded plant cells now contain new genetic material and will regenerate into whole new plants. Biotechnology is very important because it approaches problems that have been known for ages that we have not been able to solve. The major benefit in agriculture is going to be twofold. We will improve the quantity of foodstuffs we produce and we will improve the quality of the foodstuffs. Plants uh, will be able to produce more seeds or grains. Also, plants will be able to grow uh, under better circumstances. They'll be resistant to certain pests. They'll be res resistant to certain diseases and they'll be able to grow under more harsh environmental conditions. Sometimes we don't want to change, you know, but I think we have to change because if you're, if you're not adaptable in farming and if you don't have an open mind to new technologies, I don't think you'll get too far in farming. A lot of people probably have the misconception you're not working against nature, but you're working with nature. And so with some of the new technologies that are being developed that help you kind of incorporate uh, <coughs> and make it easier to work along with nature, I think that you have to, to do that in order to stay ahead of the game. Recently, scientists succeeded in isolating a gene from a bacterium found in nature. This gene makes a protein that is non-poisonous to humans, animals, plants, and most insects, but fatal to caterpillars. For years, home gardeners have used this bacterium, known as Bt, as a biological control agent in their gardens. Scientists found a way to isolate the gene for the Bt protein and transfer it directly into a plant. These plants, engineered with the Bt gene, remain untouched by the many caterpillars in this greenhouse. The plants without the Bt gene are eaten. But before genetically engineered plants are ready for the commercial market, scientists have to know whether results achieved in the greenhouse can also be achieved in the field. At the Siba Geigi Biotechnology Research Unit, preparations are underway for a field test with BT engineered tobacco plants. The field test will help the company determine whether the engineered plants will survive under realistic field conditions. The plants are transported to the test location, a farmer's field in Franklin County in central North Carolina. Field tests are a necessary step to commercialization. But before a company can test a genetically engineered plant or organism, it has to receive federal approval. In North Carolina, a law passed in 1989 requires that field tests be approved by the state as well. The North Carolina law received national attention, for it was consensus legislation drafted jointly by members of industry, government, public interest groups, and academia. Under the law, the North Carolina Department of Agriculture may approve or deny a request to conduct a field test. Dr. Scott Shore of the State Department of Agriculture was on hand as this field test began. There are almost 100 companies within North Carolina who are doing some form of biotechnology research. And many of them are actively doing things that they want to get out into the marketplace very soon. And so it's imperative that they are able to do some kind of field test so they can ascertain whether these things will work in the marketplace. And so we'd like to encourage that process. And part of that is overseeing these tests and reassuring the public that they pose no threat. There are two very important goals of any effort to regulate biotechnology. Uh, the first is to ensure that the technology is developed in a responsible way. But a second equally important aspect of a regulatory program is to ensure that we have public confidence in the technology because without that public confidence 
biotechnology has very little chance of succeeding, in my view. Four months have passed since the field tests began with the BT engineered plants. The scientists have monitored the trial closely, observing how the plants have survived in an outside environment. Today's final gathering of data will allow them to determine whether the field test was a success. We're very encouraged by what we've seen this, this summer. We had six BT lines out here, and none of those uh, had much damage on them at all. So the results that we got were what, what we had hoped for and what we had expected based on what we had seen and observed in the greenhouse and in the lab. All the control lines that do not have BT sustained considerable amount of damage. The damage um, was caused probably by four or five insects per plant. And you, you can see a whole row um, has been um, destroyed. The results are impressive. The pests have devoured those plants lacking the BT gene. Those with the BT gene survived virtually untouched. But what really is the significance of this field test? What advantages will insect-resistant plants give to the farmer? The advantages to having BT produced by the plant as opposed to spraying a chemical or spraying BT on the plant is that um, it takes a lot of effort uh, and timing uh, has to be just right to spray chemicals or microbial insecticides. Growers traditionally pay quite a bit of money for people to go out and scout their fields um, to tell them when they need to spray. Also, in, in cryptic insects, meaning insects that burrow into a plant, um, once they burrow into the plant, uh, insecticides or BT spray-ons aren't effective. If you have the, the, the protein inside the plant, it doesn't matter whether they burrow in or not, they're still going to be killed. This field test used tobacco plants as a test model. But the real goal is to engineer insect and disease-resistant genes into major food crops, such as corn. Farmer John Vollmer and extension agent Bill Lord know the problems of controlling pests in corn with conventional methods all too well. You can't get to European corn borers because they bore into the stalk and it's hard to get the product to them. Plus, you have the issue of getting in these fields with machinery or equipment and you really can't reach them. You have a dense canopy which prohibits aerial application and you can't get in the field with ground equipment because it's too thick. You'll destroy the crop. I've had the experience of trying to control corn earworm on ornamental corn where you're selling uh, corn for fall decoration and that kind of thing. And the canopy and the dense foliage just prevents uh, application of insecticides. It's just impractical to try to do so. And uh, corn, fresh market corn producers have the same problem. And so they've tried to develop low profile corns less foliage to allow the insecticides to be uh, to get to the insect. That's not always good because you like to have a strong stalk to support a lot of ear. So uh, I think uh, solutions which or genetically uh, solve the problem of, of insects would be good. And I'm glad to know that there's research going on that will offer alternatives and offer choices for me that, uh, that maybe I don't now have. Having alternatives and offering potentially important benefits, this is what most people hope biotechnology and genetic engineering will bring them. Biotechnology uh, clearly has the, the potential to strengthen the American economy to improve our global competitive, competitiveness. Uh, and if it is developed in an environmentally sound way, those are very positive developments. The application of recombinant DNA technology to the study of plants, crop plants, trees, any kind of plants, is going to take us into a new scientific era. We will understand a great deal about how plants work. There will be applications for agriculture in some areas. The technology will be, will be very good for solving certain problems and will be useless for solving others. And that's OK. The uh, scientific opportunities are certainly going to be there, and it's going to be an exciting future from that point of view. The people here in North Carolina, I think, recognize biotechnology as a natural, normal progression of uh, farming and technological advance. 
that will help them with their living standard and their well-being. Tim Pace's vision of a dream sea that resists insects, disease, and weather is becoming a reality in his lifetime. Plant biotechnology is making advances today that promise to bring great opportunities and benefits to the world of agriculture.